Hey guys, we're going to start the tutorial now. So my name is Annie and I'll be running through the demonstration on the screen. And this is Yang and she will walk around and if any of you get stuck, you can put up your, your hand at any time. So today's tutorial will do an introduction to ArcGIS Pro on 2D to 3D visualization. And this is just some introduction to what the software is. So it's like a mapping software and you can do a lot of analysis on it and make different um, cool looking maps. Some tools that you'll be using on ArcGIS Pro could be combining data sets, filtering data, and looking at buffer tools. And um, when you start making the maps, you can think about making transport maps, water catchments, and looking at 3D data. So just to start with basic navigation, if you can launch ArcGIS and create a new project, So um, on a new project, you'll hit map and then you can create a new project and name it um, whatever you'd like. And the location that it saves in is generally under um, this PC documents and in ArcGIS and that's where you'll be, be able to find all the project files and you just hit OK. And basically, once you're in, this is the um, UI interface. And you'll have your ribbon tabs on the top, some content pane on your left, and a catalog pane on your right. Um, is anyone ArcGIS before? No? So we're, oh, a little bit, a little bit. So yeah, we'll go over some of the basics. So um, changing the base map is quite a useful tool. So what you do is you go into a map, and there's um, a lot of pre-made base maps and you can have a look around and play with those. And another thing is if we go into explore, that's when you can drag your map around, zoom in using the mouse scroll arrows. And if you have data existing in your map, you'd go select and you can actually choose um, different points, but because there's nothing here, so you won't be able to select. Okay, we'll just start on the exercise. So for today's exercise, we're looking at Purirua, which is a small, medium scale area, and we'll import some data and change it into like a 3D map. So uploading data to ArcGIS Pro, if you guys can open up um, the file explorer and go into this PC scratch drive, and it's under 2024 DRH tutorials, ArcGIS week three. And once you're here, you should see two folders. You just um, click on one and shift and select both and go copy. And now we'll go back to the GIS file, which is in documents, ArcGIS. So that was under um, documents, ArcGIS and projects. Yeah, you copy the two folders into this ArcGIS folder. So that was under documents, ArcGIS, and whatever you've named it. And you just paste it in. Oh, so you find the folder. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was documents, ArcGIS, projects, and you should have a project folder. and paste in your two. So once you have it here, this folder links directly to the software. So if we go back to the software, there should be a catalog pane and under folders, you should be able to find the two folders that we've copied in. Thank you. 
Oh no, there's one more over here. Can you see any more? Oh, can you see any? Oh, so you copied one, and then that's not the file. So if you go back to the PC, and then scratch, and then just go find the other folder. Only one folder. Hold on. I think one of the folder disappeared. <laughs> Which one is the one that's gone? Is it the sub footprint one gone? Okay, I'll just copy and paste another one in there. Oh yeah. So you guys can copy the footprint one in there as well. Oh yeah, so it's just under documents, ArcGIS, projects, and then this one, yeah. yeah, just paste in there. So this folder location is quite important, so just remember every time you're adding in data, just always go back to documents, ArcGIS, projects, and find your project file, because whatever you put in here will appear within the software. So once you have your folders, you can expand on it. So there should be a little triangle and just expand. And you should see a .shp file. So you want to drag both .shp files into the map. Oh, um, if it doesn't update, you can right click on the tutorial file and click refresh. So that's another way to get the data. Oh, so on the tutorial um, folder, just any of the folder, and you can go refresh. Do you guys get it? Yeah, and then copy. And then if you go back up, right hand side, yeah, to um, this PC or go up a bit more. Yeah, to the documents. And then ArcGIS. Projects. And then your project file, yeah. And then paste. Expand this one as well. Oh, you don't have it in there yet. So if you go back up, let's copy the both of these folders and go to documents. Oh, do you want to share that? Yeah, yeah, you got it. And then now it's gonna be in here. Oh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, you can just close that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and then it'll be in there. Yeah, onto the map. And then once it's on the map, you should see it under your contents page. Okay, now I'll just move a little bit on. So on the contents page, you can drag um, your different layers around. It's kind of like your layers on Photoshop, and you can hide layers and unhide them. So the first thing that we'll do is change the symbology. So the symbology is kind of like what colors show up on the map. So if you wanna double click on the little icon on the side, so this blue one, and we'll just change the color of this. You can either double click or right click and go into symbology. Get a symbol and you just click on it. And we wanna change it to um, black outline. And under properties, you can change the properties of the line. So um, we can change the outline color to like red and a width, we can go 1.5. And always hit apply and you'll be able to see the changes on your map. And that's how you do symbology. You can do the same for the building footprint as well. So symbology and click on symbol, gallery, and there's always um, presets, so we can always use one of the building footprints or any of them, so you can have a look through. They have water, land, yeah.
Okay, the next tool that I'll show you guys is a bookmark. Um, bookmarks are really useful when you have multiple locations. To make a bookmark, you just go into bookmark and new bookmark. And you can change the name of the bookmark and so that will save one view and you can zoom into another location and save another view. So we can zoom into one of the schools and again go into bookmarks, new bookmark and you can name it school and go OK. So that was um, all under bookmarks. Oh, did it do some really good? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, not yet? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. The symbology the bookmark. A bookmark, yeah. Yeah, so a bookmark, when, when you click on the bookmark, it will bring you back to the different views that you've saved it. So that could be useful when you have different locations. A bookmark, it will automatically save. So if you go into new bookmark, and then it will always be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bookmark. So when you're about to save a bookmark, make sure you're on the view that you want to save. And then when you click new bookmark, it will automatically capture whatever is on your screen as the bookmark. Yeah. OK, once we're happy with um, the bookmarks, and we can move on to making this into a 3D map. So to make it into a 3D map, you want to go into view on the top ribbon and go convert and to local scene. Local scene is um, a medium and small like area. If you want a global scene, it's like a much larger area. So you'd mostly use a local scene. And it will just kind of change the base map into a 3D base map instead. Under view, and then there's a convert and local scene. And that should bring up with like a new tab on the top and it says map 3D. So right now we can see that the map is kind of dark and it's like it's nighttime. So we can change that by going to properties under 3D map. So under 3D map, you want to right click and go into properties. Yeah, so there should be a tab called 3D underscore map and go under illumination and change the altitude to 60. Yeah, so that's where the position of the sun is. You can um, adjust this in the future as well, but 60 should bring you up a bit more. And once you hit OK, it will um, bring in the effect. Yeah, so right click. Yeah, on 3D map and then properties and then change under illumination to 60 on the altitude. Yeah. yeah, once you've changed it to 60, you can also change it and just see how that um, goes. But yeah, the higher, the brighter um, the lighting will be. Okay, once we've um, adjusted the illumination, we can start extruding the buildings. So we want to click on the building footprints layer. And if you go control T while clicking on the layer, you can bring up the attribute table. So that was clicking on the building footprints control T attribute table. Um, it will bring up this table and this data set, you can see that it has height data. And so that means you know that it can be used as a 3D map. If it doesn't have the height data, then we can't really do the exercise and you can just close the attribute table after. So with the layer selected, there should be a feature layer um, tab at the very top. So that was the building footprints layer feature layer. You want to go under type and select the max height. That should kind of redo your stuff and um, under field, you want to choose height, and that will start to extrude your buildings. Feature layer type max height and select the field as height. Yeah. So 
Yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. Type. Yeah, type. Yeah, and then under field when it loads, just choose the height as the field. Yeah, so the extrusion takes the maximum height that's been put in and it kind of just pulls up the buildings. And if you can zoom in, you can kind of see that all the buildings now have a height to it. This might not be the most accurate or um, because it's using kind of the height and from sea level. And so it's not the most accurate, but if you can have like a visual representation. So I think it's pretty good. Just do some more changes to kind of mimic the color of the sky. So we can change the background color. Right now you can see that the background color is just white. Um, we can do that by going into the 3D map layer and going to the attributes, of, um, the properties again. So 3D um, map and then at, uh, the properties. And we can change under general the background color. And you can choose whatever color you want. And once you hit OK, it should change the background color or the color of the sky. And I've lost my cell. Yep, and once you've kind of got your colors and you're happy with it, we can also start adding in other layers of data. So ArcGIS, um, under Catalog and Portal, there's a lot of built-in online data sets. So if you guys can find the Catalog pane, if you can't, then you can go under View and use the Catalog. Um, you can search up um, Perua Environmental Offsets, or just search up Perua, so P-R-I, RUA. And the layer that we want is the environmental offsets layer. And how you add it into your map is just drag and drop. So we're just adding in an um, extra layer of data. So we're going into ArcGIS portal and finding um, the environmental offsets layer. Yeah, you just drag it into your map view and then you should be able to, it should load in. Uh, it should be, it should be under a 2D layer actually. Yeah. Yeah, once it loads in, it will kind of look quite bright. And to change kind of the color on, to make it not as bright, you can go into, if you click on the layer and go, oh, there should be a feature layer oh, or group layer, and then you can um, turn down the transparency. So if we change the transparency, it should change it on the map as well. And it will be lighter in, um, Um, because it's a 2D data set, so it's not got any height data in it, so you can put it in a 2D map. It's just better for organization. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, you can just drag drag it down to 2D. Yeah. And then it should it lower. Yeah, I wonder if I can, like, disable the... Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder why it's not showing up. You can cross out of this one. Okay. It's showing eventually. It's like loading. I think. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, and once you have it, you can go into the group layer and you can turn down transparency so that it's like more easy to see, just up to you, yeah. So, so this one is online portal. So this is like embedded into the system. So there will always be data on the online one, or you can go online and download your own data set. And that's what we use the folders for. So you have to copy and paste into the folders. Yeah. Oh, can, I, can I change these colors? Or is it yeah, yeah, one? yeah, you can. Um, I think if you expand on it, there's like all oh. these different ones, and that's how you would change it. I think it's just loading. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. What are flooding flows? Like, what are they? Um, I'm not too sure what these are either. Oh. I just found the data set online. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so most of the time, if you search under the portal, sometimes it will come up, sometimes it won't. Sometimes you have to search on Google because it depends on the area if they have um, GIS resources, like if they have the data for it. Some areas are harder to find than others. Necessarily. So some other websites that you can use is a website called Coordinates. Yeah, Coordinates of a K. Um, yeah, you have to download it as a file and then put it through the folders. Yeah, just like what we did in the beginning, copy and paste, yeah. Yeah, so this is the website to get data if, um, if you want to search anywhere else. So it's on the screen. It's called Coordinates, and it's a free um, government website. You just need to make a login, and then you can start downloading the different layers from um, Coordinates. Oh yeah, so from here, for example, if we switch up building footprints. Yeah, coordinates of a K. So, so this is the pre one that I used for um, this tutorial. If you add it to the map, there's an export option and you can adjust it. And they usually have different files, so you can download it as a PDF, but mainly go for the shape file for ArcGIS. Yeah, that's how you get data from online. And that's all that we're showing for this tutorial, but there is um, another like course online and it's free. I based this tutorial off this one. Um, this is Zeri's one, and it will walk you through the same process, but with a data set in Wellington. And yeah, that's all for today's tutorial. So thank you guys for coming in and we'll answer some questions as we go around.